Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Mills, aka Vector Geek. Today I want to explore a technique that I saw in a couple of episodes of Deke Techniques and expanded on uh, where he shows us how to make railroad tracks in Illustrator. That, you can check out episodes 112 and 113 where he does that. He uses a couple different methods involving multiple strokes and dash effects combined with transform effects. After viewing these tutorials, I immediately wanted to see how the power of Illustrator's pattern brush effect could be used in addition to these methods to make some cool train tracks even cooler. Here's a sampling of the tracks that I came up with. I've been messing around playing with some of the styles. Right now I want to concentrate on the back one and give you an idea how this thing is built. Let me zoom in on a little bit and select it. I'll go over here uh, to the appearance palette and drag it out so I can show you how this is constructed. Um, get rid of the train track and the middle brush. The bottom brush is just the gravel brush that I made in Illustrator using a technique from episode 17 of Deke's Techniques where he uses the offset filter in Photoshop to create a seamless pattern texture and a lot of people don't know you can take those seamless patterns and put them right in Illustrator just using the place command and embedding them and using them as pattern swatches. Um, that's what I did here. I built up a whole bunch of uh, pattern swatches over here. The different gravel and asphalt. Even took some pictures out of my road out in the front. Uh, going on to the net, the middle stroke. That's uh, my road out in front that I took a photograph of and just turned it into a, a seamless repeating pattern. You can either use it as a fill or a stroke. I used it as a stroke. The top part is the railroad track uh, pattern brush and that's what I want to concentrate on showing you today how to build. Drag the appearance panel back. I love that feature, by the way, of being able to turn on and off the eyeballs. It's wonderful. Now, first, I started with the railroad tie. I don't want to take a long time showing you how I did this, but I basically used the knife tool. It's over here under the eraser, and I just drew a rectangle and cut it up with the knife tool. And then I drew a faux beveled edges and colored them appropriately. And I got a nice little railroad tie. After I was done with that, I made three of them and equally spaced them how I thought the railroad track should look. And then on top of that, I drew out some railroad ties. Down these railroad ties, uh, let's see if I select the, the tie and look in the appearance panel over here. You can see it's just a multiple stroke effect, again, like Deke used. Uh, the bottom stroke is 16 points, the middle stroke is 9 point, and the top stroke is, uh, is it? Let's see, oh, 6 point. And I just colored them until they looked like a railroad or track. And then I put these little uh, ties on. And to get this tiling right, uh, I want the space on the end of these to be half the space that's in between the two ties so they'll repeat right. If you just did one tie, it'd be real easy to do because you wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, in this case, how I do that, I make sure that the uh, smart guides are turned on. Just go to View Smart Guides. And then I take my line tool and I draw a line in between these two ties. Oops, that wasn't quite right. You have to say when it intersects. I just hold down the shift key until it says intersect. And I know that's a perfect line. Now with it selected, I'll hold the Alt key and shift drag it over until it says intersect. And once it's over there, or you don't even have to shift drag because you don't need to copy it. You just drag it over until it snaps in place. Then I select Object, Path, Add Anchor Points. That adds an anchor point exactly in the middle. 
So I'll just take the selection tool and delete that. Now I know this is half of the space in between here. And I have a guide to it, say these weren't even. I can just take it and line it up exactly so I know that that's the exact space I need. And you'll just do that on both ends. Once you have that done, you'll select both your railroad ties and your rails. Uh, click on the brushes panel to make it active. And then click new brush. In the brush selection type, you'll select pattern brush. And you can just name it RRT dash O whatever. I'll do 07 since I have a whole bunch of them in here. And now you have a perfect uh, repeating pattern brush. And we can test that out. I'll show you here in a sec. Get rid of the construction. And show that other one. This has been turned into a graphic style, so I'll just get rid of the uh, appearance. And click on the new brush that we just did. Railroad Track 07. And, oops, it's a little bit too big. So how I can fix that is go to the options or just double click on the brush and click on the scaling and scale it down. I think it's like 25% or whatever. And click apply to strokes. Now we can go in there and see how it looks. Now you can apply drop shadows and all kinds of cool stuff to it to get it even more depth. Uh, right now, uh, I just want to show you how you create a graphic style with this so you can apply it to anything. But uh, right below this, we can add a stroke. Um, I'll just, with the railroad track selected, I'll just click the page icon. Now on the bottom, I'll just change that from a railroad track to just a basic stroke. And we'll go to the stroke options and we'll select something like 60. And with the stroke of selected, go over to your swatches and select one of those patterns. Asphalt, uh, rock, whatever. Once you have something you like, uh, let's see, that top railroad track needs a drop shadow. We'll just do stylize, drop shadow. Say not too much. Yeah, oh, okay. That's what it looks like. Very cool. Anyway, you can select the uh, whole thing uh, and go over here to the graphic styles and select the graphic style. Crazy track one. Now you got a graphic style. I've made a whole bunch of them over here, and just to give you a taste of what you can do with this, I've even made some uh, trolley tracks, some brick patterns, uh, all kinds of stuff. It was really fun playing with it. I hope you guys have fun with it too. Um, I'd like to thank Deke for having this contest. and. Uh, as a steam panel of judges, I've learned so much from all of you over the years, especially Deke's one-on-one -on -one series on Linda.com, Morty Golding's Real World Illustrator Books, and his Fridays with Morty series. And I watched uh, Bert Monroy when he did Tech TV, and later when he did the P Pixel Perfect show. And I also got to see the mad scientist, Russell Brown of Photoshop World. That was a real treat. I want to thank you, and good luck, everyone.